Boy. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at the Gretsch Electromatic Junior Jet 2. So, my first ever Gretsch. Is it a good first impression? Spoiler, yes it is. So the Junior Jet 2 is the, the Junior Jet 2, blah, 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 blah. So let's explain the name of it a little bit. Electromatic comes from the series, a bit like uh, Squire Classic Vibe, Vintage Modified, Fender Player series, you know, it's the Electromatic series. Junior, because it is a short scale, 30 inches sounds pretty impressive to me. It's shorter than your average long scale bass. The strings have a little less tension. It feels a bit more like a guitar to play. You feel inspired to do more bends and, and things like that. Don't know why it's called the Jet. Maybe it's the Les Paul style body. And then two, because it is the sequel. No, because it has two hoil, hoil? <laughs> because it has two mini humbuckers in there. Now, a famous user of this bass that you might know is Mike Kerr from Royal Blood. And this bass retails for under 300 pounds. So massive artists like that to be using this kind of bass is really, really cool, I think. Does it scream to the high quality of this bass? Now, I am not a huge Les Paul fan. I like the guitars. They look awesome. They're very classic. Basses, oh, no, not for me. But on a short scale, would you kind of get closer to a guitar look? Damn. This thing looks awesome. It comes in four different colors, I believe, of black, uh, a walnut, this tobacco sunburst, and an awesome green color as well. Starting at the top, the headstock looks really cool. I love the Gretsch logo and Electromatic going down there looks really good. And that really nice truss rod cover is, it looks awesome. The tuners are made of die cast. Uh, I would say, starting off my review of this bass, with probably the weakest thing about it, and that is the tuners. I don't think they are that good. If you were gonna make some upgrades on this bass, that would be the first thing that I would do. They're certainly not as good as some of the other more affordable basses I've had. From a negative to a positive, the maple neck. <clears throat> oh my God. It is, I'm gonna say it, probably the best feeling a bit of wood on a more affordable bass that I've played. It feels phenomenal. You'll see in my unboxing I did all of it. You can see my first impressions in the unboxing I did of this. It's got this, I'd say a light gloss. It doesn't feel like a heavy lacquer, like some of the uh, Squire classic vibes where um, I'd be tempted to sand it off. This thing feels really, really smooth. And this is a guy that prefers a satin or, you know, even an unfinished neck over a heavy gloss. They've got it bang on and for under 300 pounds it is phenomenal it feels so good it's a short scale so it's a little bit smaller but it doesn't feel too thin it's a bit wider and i think more comfortable compared to like the uh, fender mustang now you might look at the fretboard and think well that doesn't look like palfero or rosewood it's really really dark and that is because it is made of walnut i don't think i've ever seen a walnut fretboard before but it looks awesome feels great. I did some adjustments to the truss rod when I got the bass. Hasn't moved. It's, it's holding up really well. The pickups we'll talk about later after the sound demo. But first of all, let's talk about the thing that you all want to talk about, and that is knobs. Why have I made this my thing? So the knobs are 
fantastic. They are so, so smooth to twist. Oh. <laughs> so the controls on this are just a master tone, a master volume, and then a toggle switch. I suppose in terms of versatility, it would have been better if there was individual volumes for the pickups, but there's still plenty of tones in there regardless with that three-way toggle switch. On more affordable bases, I'm looking out for certain things. Uh, you know, the fret, oh, I didn't talk about the fret work. The frets are absolutely fine. Oh, smooth as a baby's bum. Where was I? Oh yes, the toggle switch. I was worried about the toggle switch. When I played the Fender Player Mustang, the toggle switch I really didn't like. It felt pretty cheap and that like it stuck out load so that it could get knocked really easily. And so I had some fears about getting this thinking, oh, this is probably gonna be the same, if not a bit worse, because this is under 300 pounds new. This blows it out of the water. It feels like such high quality. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like.
Let me know in a comment down below what you think about this bass. Did it live up to your expectations? For me, I think it kind of did and didn't at the same time. When I first got the bass, I didn't really like the sound of the neck or the bridge pickup by themselves, but I really liked the middle position. I thought that was the uh, the shining star of this bass. However, putting some new strings on, oh, some new strings on there, I really like that neck pickup. It's really getting really close to P bass territory, particularly when you're slapping. Oh, oh, sounds so good. It's way more boomy than the bridge pickup. And that's when I had the dead strings on it. I, that's what I didn't really like. It was like too much of a contrast and the middle position was great. But personally, favorite sounds were from that neck pickup and then the middle position and then the bridge. I'd never really like bridge pickup soloed anyway, unless they're like a uh, like a Music Man style humbucker. These are mini humbuckers, so then you don't really get that. If you're hoping for that Music Man sound, you're not gonna get anywhere close with this bridge humbucker. So you shouldn't really expect that, and that shouldn't really be seen as a downside. It still sounds good, don't get me wrong, but I do prefer the neck pickup or the two mixed together. Now, you know me, I like to dig in hard with a pick, but I think my favorite thing to do with this bass is play finger styles. Picking it up off my wall whilst I'm working and just jamming on it. Short scales really, really lend themselves for that, I think. If you want something to just jam on and just to, uh, and just to play, this bass is so much fun, so much fun to play. So short scales really lend themselves to like a woody type tone. And I think these mini humbuckers contribute to that even more, which make it really, it really owns what it is this bass. It's not trying to be something else. It's really got its own sound and I think it just suits that so well. It's definitely what I was after in a short scale. It has that uniqueness about it. Now unfortunately I don't have any on me today but I really would like to try out some flats on this bass as well. I think it would sound cool. And one more thing is don't forget to like this video. Subscribe for even more stuff coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.